Hello, I'm Joe from B+. In one of our previous recordings, we did the hardware setup for our starter kit together. What we will do now is the software setup. That means configuration of the TimeSync service, configuration, and of course we will start a recording of the recorder, and we will check the pictures from the camera with the visualization application. Let's do it. In total, we've got to consider four software components. The COD, Serial Digital I.O. Service, the XTSS, Universal TimeSync Service from B+, both software service components, and Aveto App Recording and Aveto App Visualization, both application layer software components. So the application layer software components, of course, rely on COD and XTSS service layer components. And of course, with the hardware, you may use COD and XTSS uh, as a base for your own application layer software. Let's start with the first one, COD. In your starter kit, uh, COD service comes with a demo application. Let's use it, load the library, register for it. And you can see it's a whole bunch of serial and digital IOs you can set or request from our brick here. Let's select just a few which I can show afterwards on uh, application layer with our software V2 app. The production parameters, for example, register and request. And here you get from the brick storage cartridge uh, revision, serial number, production date, manufacturer, location, and so on. Okay, let's close that again and let's have a look on the LEDs in front of our brick. We've got numerous LEDs. Let's register for this one and get the status of all the LEDs. And for our demo purposes, let's select we want to have it blinking in orange color and set it. Okay, we will check that afterwards with a Vito app visualization when we have access to the cameras connected to our MDI link. Okay, then let's close it again, unregister, and close the demo application. So feel free to get familiar with all the possibilities of COD service you can have, and of course, you can use um, as a service layer software in your own application software. That's it for COD. Let's go ahead to XTSS, Universal TimeSync Service. The TimeSync Service can be accessed by the Configurator and the Monitor tool we provide with the Starter Kit and the XTSS product component, of course. Let's start with the Configurator. Bunch of settings again uh, might be selected and modified all together or port by port. Let's check the most interesting port for us. It's the 10 gigabit Ethernet port, and I connected the MDI link to port number one. So this is the most important port for us. And yes, of course, we can distribute the time, time relay function functionality. It's time aware. We've got the platform time synchronization. So it's a hardware based synchronization we have here. And we use by default protocol IEEE 802.1 AS. So we can check the settings for the active domains here. And of course, if we want to make some changes, let's do it for domain zero first. Uh, low uh, priority value means high priority. So our brick, of course, is expected to work as a type master for the connected MDI link, which is the time slave afterwards. Okay, so the best master clock algorithm is used here according to the specification. And we have got to take care about the settings, which in the end, of course, define who's master, who's slave in the whole setup. Our setup is uh, pretty small. We just have a brick, we've got a GPS source, and we've got a, a time slave, our MDI link. But uh, nevertheless, we should check if the clock source here is really set to GPS. Um, as I'm in a closed room here, unfortunately, we will not get a GPS sync. Nevertheless, uh, when you're outside, of course, you want to synchronize to the GPS time 
you derive. And synchronized system time might be a helpful setting. I already did it here. So that means my Windows system time is synchronized to the time I get from the GPS signal. So for the working clock domain, the free running counter we use, which is never allowed to jump in no direction, same or similar settings, a very high value. Uh, let's make it similar with the domain zero. A very low value means a high priority here as well. And uh, distribution is on. And we, of course, cannot accept to synchronize the GPS time because then we would not be able um, to make it in no case jump. Okay, so we've got to save the configuration and a restart is required. Uh, so we've got to stop the service and start it again. And we did our time sync configuration. Let's check in our XTSS monitor now if we really got what we expected to configure. You can see we've got two active domains here, domain 0 and domain 1, the working clock. You can see the local identities, priority 1 value is very interesting. And we both set to the value of 2. And yes, uh, we are automatically, by using this value, the grandmaster in the system with our MDI link. Okay. Then, yeah, we've got this domain zero as well as this domain one, the master, and we are synchronized. And remember, we selected uh, for domain zero that we don't want to have the internal oscillator, but GPS. But unfortunately, as mentioned, we don't get a GPS sync. So we fall back to the internal oscillator because we've got to start with any time, of course. Okay, then uh, you can see with uh, epoch times here, the values for our two domains, you can see deviations um, and so on. And you can see all the interfaces here. And as you can see, uh, the one here is we are master on both domains. And this is exactly the 10 gigabit Ethernet port number one. Uh, we already had 77. Uh, delay count measurements, propagation delay count measurements, and the current propagation delay is 105 nanoseconds. So this is exactly the value which is compensated by our time synchronization protocol. Okay, that's it for XTSS. Let's go ahead to Aveto app recording the first application layer software. And please keep in mind, XTSS and Siori are service layer software components. And of course, you might use them for your own applications as well. The recorder, the recording application from B Plus can be accessed by this web interface here. And we can see, as mentioned, when we talked about the COD service, we can see some serial digital I.O. here, the production parameters in um, our application layer software here, as well as some temperatures we get from uh, COD here from our brick hardware. So on the main page, we can see, as it's automatically detected here, uh, the recorder with its GPS module, no Ethernet, sources connected, except of our separately handled MDI link here. And on our MDI link here, we've got uh, two cameras connected to the MDI link. So the source, pardon, the source family, the interfaces, and the channels. Okay. Then let's check data rates. We just have a single brick here, no cluster configured. So uh, the data rate the brick has is the overall data rate, and it's 332 megabyte here. Uh, system load information with CPU and RAM utilization. Uh, GPS, of course, is yeah, with just some kilobyte here. Not really a lot of data. And let's check the camera data sources. Where is it? There it is. We can see two camera streams as expected, and they have all about 121 megabytes. And that's why we have this 330 or 40 megabytes in total for the system here. Okay. Recorder control. That's what the driver would work with um, typically. 
and there is a car mode as well which makes the soft buttons a little bit bigger here for an easier access and yeah let's use the pre-trigger time here let's change it to nine seconds of course we've got to wait nine seconds until this buffer is load a post trigger time is set to five seconds pre-trigger is ready let's take a snapshot snapshot means uh, nine plus five seconds and the five seconds is the time which is running now and our snapshot of in total 14 seconds is done here Okay, start stop recorder as is, is possible as well, of course. GPS as mentioned in a closed room here. Unfortunately, we don't get a GPS signal. Pre-trigger ready again. Storage good. Storage actually, actually is empty here. Um, we act as a time sync master as configured with the XTSS service. So in total, we are ready for recording. Okay, uh, device info. Again, a lot of COD information and the configuration here. Uh, we just have the single brick. If we would have a cluster of recorders, then we could configure here the cluster operation with our standalone brick here. We can configure each data source. We could rename it, of course, uh, and make a bunch of other settings here. Okay, so that's it about the recorder just in a nutshell here of course with our starter kit introduction let's have a look on the next application layer software the visualization the visualization application software our veto app visualization as it comes with the starter kit shall help you to to see the camera streams from your cameras on the mdi link synchronized to brick um, of course. So, config manager, the first step, shows us here the incoming data streams, the sources. Let's select a sync here for the data stream, camera views for the first and the second camera. And yes, we know there is no GPS sync, but nevertheless, let's connect the GPS information. Okay, so as expected, we don't know where we are and we can see the camera streams. Hello, everybody. Okay, um, you can see here with this camera our brick with the LEDs, and that's what we did. Please remember when we talked about the serial and digital IO configuration, there is our orange blinking LED. Okay, let's go back to the configuration manager. Um, yeah, if you of course want to do more than just visualize the incoming data streams with your starter kit, uh, for example, make your own uh, camera, LiDAR, uh, radar, uh, whatever, uh, view the visualization object. If you want to make your own source object, because you've got your own LiDAR, of course. Um, if you want to make your own source code available here uh, with some translator objects, um, feel free and, of course, do never hesitate to contact your B plus sales contact. Okay, that's it from my side. The starter kit components in software in a nutshell. Thanks very much.